Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP laptop. This is an HP Notebook 15-PS011. And in this video I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can replace the mechanical drive that comes in here with a solid state drive. The solid state drives are much much faster than mechanical drives and it will boost the performance of the laptop humongously. Just remember by removing your main storage in here, you have to reinstall Windows. I made a video how to create your Windows 11 USB boot drive, even a, video, a separate video for those laptops that they don't have a PPM or restrictions uh, for the Windows 11. You can still install them on those laptops. In this laptop, we have installed Windows 11 with no problem at all. All right, check those links, how to create your Windows 11 USB boot drive. Once you put a new drive in the new solid state drive in here, you can just pop in the USB drive, boot it up. It's going to boot up through your USB. If it doesn't press F12 while it's booting up, or F9, I'll say it was F9, and it's going to give you a list of where you want to boot from. And choose your USB and follow the simple installation, and you'll be inside the Windows with no problem. And few Windows update, and there you set. If you want to get your Windows installed properly with no bloatware, those garbage program, uh, affiliated programs that get installed, watch any of my Windows installation guide so you have the clean windows installed on your laptop. So you don't have to do all those candy crush, all those garbage that comes installed. All right, in this video exclusively, we're gonna open it up, show you how to open it up and how to add the storage or remove the storage. Now, if you wanna remove your mechanical drive and you still wanna use it externally uh, as an external storage, you can do that. Simply purchase yourself an external carry adapter, just like this one, and put a new hard drive in here and you have a USB-C portable hard drive. So you can take an advantage. I'll leave that link in the video description. Every tool, everything I use will be linked in the video description. So first thing first, back up your files, power it off, flip it upside down. First, we're gonna remove the battery, un slide it to the unlock position, slide it while holding it, and slide the battery backward. Tool number one, a good screwdriver set is always recommended so you don't damage the screw heads. You're gonna use a Phillips number one. If you get the pro set, that will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers. If not, get the basic set. For the opening tools, I'll be using a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. These two sets, they're really rough and they can damage and cut yourself or even damage the case, but the guitar pick is really soft and will not damage anything. All right, so you're gonna use the guitar pick to expose the hidden screws, which are under the rubber foot, backward, on the back and on the front. Put it right in there and scoop the rubber feet upward. Bring it up, attach it to the side. It has a double-sided adhesive. Don't put a super glue if yours is not sticking. Just grab a double-sided adhesive and put it to one side. Now there's a screw right under the battery, a screw right under the uh, rubber feet, and a screw camouflaged right in the middle right in here. So you're gonna start from one corner and remove all the screws that you can, that you can see. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mix matching them. So keep them in a single pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the commentary. All right, now that we removed the screws, double check. I missed one back there, so always double check the screws that you remove. The one in the middle. All right, now next, what you want to do, you want to open up the laptop a little bit, and then you want to stick the guitar pick between the palm rest and the bottom cover, and you just twist it, you want to hear those big click sound that you want to do all around in the front. Go to the corners, the uh, front, and work yourself all the way to the back corner. You want to hear those click sounds. Do the left and right side. There we go. So once you see that thing is opening, just grab it, put your finger there so it doesn't go down. And you're gonna yank it upward. There's a hook right in the middle here. That's this one right there that grabs it from here. So you gotta kinda yank it up a little bit. And right over here we can see that we have a uh, storage, uh, SATA storage 2.5 inch. Now, again, we do have another slot here. This is an M.2 slot. 
I don't think this is an NVMe, but I'm going to test it out right now to make sure that if it's NVMe or not. But this client wants to replace this one with a 2.5 inch, 256, 250 gig, 240 gig, let's call it. I would recommend you that Samsung brand storage that are really durable. You can put up to 4 terabyte, uh, 2.5 inch in here. And if this is an NVMe, we're going to confirm that. You can put, because there's a version of this one that does take an NVMe, you can put up to 2 terabyte. You can put 4 terabyte, but you require a beefy heatsink, which you can't fit in here. So I would recommend you up to 2 terabyte. They do nicely provide the screw right in here to go from here. The NVMe, it looks like this. Let's say if you want to, you can test it out right now too without putting it. So let's go ahead and disconnect this storage here to remove this one. There's only one screw at the back. We need to remove that one right there. And then lift it up in 45 degree angle, it's slide it backward. We do need this bracket metal caddy. So you need to remove these two screws. All right. And then you want to grab your new SSD. Again, you can go up to four terabyte, but it's unnecessary. Go one terabyte at least if you want to, but in this case, whatever the client asks for. And we are going to test that logic if that's an NVMe, because people always ask me if that's an NVMe or not. We had a different model for a BS that didn't support NVMe, and we had another model that was supporting. So we're going to clarify that issue right now. So. If this one does take an NVMe, first you want to remove one screw from here. This one goes upside down in here. Okay, this one doesn't go to in here, so this is not an NVMe jack. So this is a SATA connector. All right, I confirmed that this one is not an NVMe. You can put up to two terabyte M.2 SATA. So M.2 SATA comes here with the two notches on here. Bring it down, slide it in in 45 degree angle, just like that, and bring it down and put the tiny screw right over. The NVMe comes with one notch, the M.2 SATA comes with two notch. If you have an NVMe, it will simply not go through. First of all, the notch is here, it's not on that side, and you have to rotate, and it doesn't fit through here, so it's not gonna go through. The pins are a little less, and this one has a more pin. So you can only put an M.2 SATA in here up to two terabyte and four terabyte on here. So in case you want to add, you can add. All right, now let's go ahead and put this storage in. Make sure it goes inside the connector and then the screw hole match it. Screw hole. And I don't know where I put the screw for this one. Where did I put the tiny screw for this? Oh, it's right on my screw. So we're going to put that tiny screw right over, tighten it up. And we're going to grab the bottom cover, bring it over, push down the corner of the back, the front. You want to hit those nice click sound in the middle, press it down on the battery side, put the screws on the hinge side, and we're going to power on and we're going to place, put in the USB boot drive so you guys can see how it does boot. The screen is really reflective, so some people will start whining about that, but this is what I can do. So I can't remove the reflection on the screen. All right, so let's put the battery in, slide it in. I'll put the screws later on. So put the screws and put the bottom uh, legs right over, and the one in the middle, and that should be all. So let's go ahead and if you see any gap opening, just pinch them together, usually at the back, like this one here. So pinch them, it will go to its place. So I'm going to grab the charger, plug in the charger, grab my USB boot drive, plug it in. So I'm going to power on, and I'm going to tap on F9. Keep tapping on F9. In my straight, go to the boot because there's no OS on that one, so it's just going through. You can, it automatically went through my USB drive and it's, ro it's loading up the installation guide. I don't know if it's going to load right there, so it's going to give choose your language, next, next, and there you go. But I want to show you guys the uh, boot menu. So we're going to force shut down. 
one secure way to go to the boot menu is to power it on and press escape. And then you're gonna see F1 system info, F2, F9 for the boot device. So press F9. And then in here, it will give you to choose the hard drive, the USB hard drive, Kingston Travel, and then press enter. And it's gonna go through a USB uh, installation. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out through your own storage upgrade for UHP Notebook 15-BS series. As always, if you have any question or requests, feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.